Hey guys, this is Noah with Learn Meta Analysis, and today we need to talk about deep research. Okay, so deep research is kind of, I don't want to say it's like past its prime, but the hype has kind of worn off a bit, right? It came out a couple weeks ago now at this point, maybe a month ago, maybe even a month and a half ago. I don't know. AI stuff moves so fast. But at this point, I'm not seeing YouTube flooded with videos anymore, but what I am seeing is the large language model providers continuing to improve how well deep research works. Now, today I wanna to talk specifically about two different implementations of deep research that are either, one is free, one is very low cost. So the free one I wanna talk about is Google Gemini. The paid one that I wanna talk about is through Chat LLM. So I had never used Gemini's deep research before, but I had used Chat LLMs, okay? And so let's actually start with Chat LLMs. So over here, we're at Chat LLM. Uh, I have a whole video review on Chat LLM from my three month review that I put out maybe like a month ago. I'll include that in the description. I'm not gonna cover it now, but long story short, you have access to a bunch of different LLMs all in one place, and it gives you an option to do deep research. So they've been, at least I assume they've been working on it because it seems to function different than it did a couple of weeks ago when I made the video on deep research with this. And at the present time, I'm pretty impressed with it. It works pretty good. So on the Google Gemini deep research page, when I am here, I went to Gemini Deep Research, and it does not necessarily tell you which exact model it is using, but I suspect that it is using the Gemini Flash 2.0 thinking model. So that's what I think it's using. Here, I don't have necessarily the API access to Flash thinking directly. Okay, when I look at this, uh, I have Flash 2.0 and image generation. But when we enter a prompt, you can see we have this think button here. So what I did is I used the same prompt in both Gemini and in Chat LLM. I said, write a literature review about social agency theory in the context of pedagogical agents. And I chose this because this is a complicated thing to do. Social agency theory exists outside of the world of multimedia learning. So this is actually a pretty challenging prompt in that we don't want it talking about the psychological part, but we want it talking about the educational psychology part. And then something that I hadn't tried before, but I was talking with friends about the other day, and maybe I did try it, but I haven't tried it in the deep research context, I don't think. Anyway, something that seemed interesting to me, it was the second part of this prompt. Please highlight productive future research directions. And I wanted to see if what these came up with aligned with my knowledge of the field from working in the area of pedagogical agents for the last 20 years. So this took about 10 minutes to do in chat LLM. So here's what it does. It Oh, and I forgot to mention, I clicked the think button and I clicked the deep research button because I was trying to replicate what I had done on Gemini deep research. Um, and I think that was the closest I could get based on my assumptions of it. So it gave us the analysis and plan. It told us what its different steps were going to do. I'm not going to go through all these because it's important, but at the same time, I don't I don't feel the need to micromanage it. So we get down here and it says the first step is to research this. This will include its origins, blah, blah, blah. And it did take 10 minutes and it went through 100 sources, it says. OK, so first thing that I want to mention, I have the patience of ground squirrel. You can imagine me sitting here for 10 minutes waiting for a result. It seemed like forever. <laughs> like, I, w I will say that like with LMs, especially web-based LMs, I've gotten really used to instant responses. So waiting 10 minutes for something, I know I like I have a problem, right? I should be able to wait 10 minutes for something and just be okay with it. But waiting for 10 minutes for something from an LM, I have extremely high expectations on what it better throw out at me when it's done. So long story short it throws us out after 10 minutes a uh, nice little literature review here about social agency theory it goes through the introduction it talks about the foundations i actually kind of liked this it talked about the origins it talked about the key principles uh, it talked about an educational context some of the design features that matter uh, the intersection of the theory and the agents uh, all this stuff was cool and then we got down to the gaps in current research and the future research directions right which is what i asked for so for in, in all transparency, I saved both of these uh, and copy pasted them into a Word document because I assumed that you guys don't want me to go through and read this word by word and compare the two word by word, line by line. Like nobody, I'm assuming you don't want to watch me do that. So I will tell you the kind of high level overview of my thoughts on this. My high level thoughts on this were, were pretty good. It talked more about the history and background than I expected. It was a little bit less specific in some of the more recent connections. Um, 
from social agency theory to pedagogical agents than I would have expected. Like CASA, this is important, but it's older. Cognitive theory of multimedia learning is definitely important. I would expect it to be here. But like some of these citations here, 2001, like the persona effect is from 1997, guys. 1997, that's almost 30 years ago. And I, I do understand that this is limited by the uh, papers that it has available to skim and everything like that. But you'll see in a few minutes here why I'm bringing these things up. In terms of gaps in current research, so let's see the future research directions. Enhancing cultural adaptation inclusivity. I didn't read this section right now, but I generally agree 100% that this is something that we have not really done in research is looking at cultural adaptation inclusivity. There is some research there, but there's not a lot. Long-term learning and behavioral change. This is something that's been known in the field for 25 years, so that's definitely something that's needed. Ethical design and deployment frameworks. Uh, yeah, I agree. Couldn't actually couldn't agree more that we need we need to be talking about ethics with these virtual characters. Um, Integrating emerging technologies, yes, I think that's something that's there, but there is research going on in that space. Standardized metrics and evaluation models, yeah, I, I agree 100%. So these are big things that could use research. Are they the most important things? I think that is uh, totally up to interpretation. So I, I don't want to go into the most important because I think what's most important is going to depend on your research area. But I will say that of these, I think integrating emerging technologies, personally, I view as the least important of these areas right here. All of these other things, some of them are, have been known for a long time, right? So like investigating long-term learning, that's been known for a long time. Ethical design, I think people have been calling for this since like at least 2010. Um, so, you know, we're talking about 15 years at this point. So like not really groundbreaking there, um, but that's okay. This is still pretty good. Like I don't mean to be talking down on this deep research. Like it was, it was pretty good. But is it as good as it could be? Now, I will say that when I actually tested this out, I did run Gemini first. And so I approached this a little bit biased because I had read the Gemini <laughs> results. So if you go to gemini.google.com, at least as of now, if you go to gemini.google.com, you can use deep research for free. And I had never used this before. I wanted to, I never had. So I, I thought this would be a good test. So I used that same prompt and it says to you, this is the plan. And I was ju I just let it run its plan. I didn't edit anything. I just said whatever and hit start. Uh, if you wanna edit it, you definitely can. Uh, I don't have the patience to edit something like that because the large language model and I just wanted it to do it for me. So that said, it started it, it ran it. Uh, I don't have a timestamp here, do I? Do I have a timestamp of how long this took? doesn't look like I have a timestamp of how long this took. I don't think it took 10 minutes. It might have, but it didn't feel like it took 10 minutes. So I'm not sure how long this one took. It might've been a little bit faster. The Gemini models tend to be really, really fast in general. So I wouldn't be surprised if it did. But let's talk about these results, okay? So first and foremost, you can just export it to Google Docs if you want. Like I said, I already have it there and I'll share the link in the description. So first of all, when I was reading this, it's written from a very, different kind of perspective, in my opinion. Like when I read this, it was written more, the term I would use is academically. I don't I don't mean that in the sense of like, oh, submit this to a journal article type of academic. I don't mean it that way. I just mean that the language I felt was more academic in, in tone, um, but that could just be my opinion on it. So they gave us the introduction, talking about the two things that I asked about, social agency theory and pedagogical agents, which if you remember, the other one did not start there, right? The other one started about, let's see, pedagogical agents. Okay, yeah, I guess it did. It did start with pedagogical agents and social agency theory together. So talked a little bit about that. Then it went into defining the core concepts and it went to pedagogical agents and their roles in learning. Then it talked about the connection between the two. And then here's where it got me. Here's the point where I was like, oh, this might actually be useful for me, right? Like this might be something I use more frequently now. This is something I hadn't really seen. Like I'd seen it in Scholar QA. Scholar QA includes something like this oftentimes with benefits and advantages and drawbacks and things like that. But I hadn't really seen it in a deep research implementation um, that wasn't specifically for academia. So here it's like examining the impact of social cues. And this is what got me, look at this, okay? So they go down here to a summary of the table of, of studies. And this was pretty cool to me, right? So I started looking at this and I was like, now this is this is nice, this gets my attention. I think this is interesting. I just realized that they cited one of my studies and I wanna see which one it was. Uh, I'm not really sure what they're citing as a 2022 paper. Okay, so what I'm looking at here is, 
It says Schrader et al. 2022. I'm sure I published something about agents in 2022. It would really surprise me if I didn't. Um, I don't remember the specific details here, but um, what it's actually trying to cite or what it says it's citing, designing and learning with agents and umbrella review. Okay, so even that is wrong, right? <laughs> like, unless it's citing something from within here. Let's check the reference list and see if it was citing a 2022 paper. Um, do I have anything in here from 2022? I do not. So yeah, I, I don't really know what that 2022 is referring to, but this is another example of why you can't just blindly trust large language models, okay? I've, I've said this a million times, I feel like. Never just blindly trust these results. That's not how you should be using this. And that's why I've always, I, I continue to say in video after video after video, I think these tools are awesome for getting you an introduction to an area, but I do not think they are necessarily good for giving you your in-depth understanding, right? So they are a really great way to learn things fast, but that when you learn things fast, it's often not the best, right? So I think it's a great kickoff point. I don't think it's my ending point. I, would, I don't think I'd use this as an ending point. So that said, it moves from there into a detailed analysis of key variables. Um, it talks about the agent's voice and communication style, the appearance and design, the behaviors, interactions, and learner characteristics. These are all things I think were covered in the uh, other one as well, uh, generally speaking anyway. And so here it breaks, us, breaks it down into a nice little table. I actually like this table. Like when I was looking at this, I was like, this is, this is helpful and it was fast and I didn't have to build it myself. I, I quite liked this aspect of it. Lastly, it brought it, or I should say second to last, it brought us into critiques and limitations. So here's the thing that caught my attention, okay? This paper right here, Cognitive Effective Social Theory of Learning. This is big. Like, to me, this was big. This is kind of like the newest extension of social agency theory, and I was really, really, really excited to see that this was actually included in their write-up here. So moving forward, it gets to the actual point of the second part of our prompt, productive future research directions. When we scroll down again, we have a nice little table. Specific social processes, yes. This is what I definitely think we need research on. Characteristics of learners, yes. Long-term effects, yes. Theoretical frameworks, hmm. This really ties back into specific social processes. So I, I think that's basically the same. Novel learning context, that's the same as the other one. Uh, same as the other one came up with. Interplay of social cues. Now this is an interesting thing. How do these social cues interact with one another? That is an interesting point. Learner agency. Yeah, but I don't see people talking about it that much in the field. Um, and maybe that, maybe that in itself is something that is a reason to be doing that research. Ethical implications. Yes. Agent roles. This is something that was researched a, a fair bit in like the mid 2000s um, people are occasionally circling back to it but I wouldn't say that this is something that the whole field is like we need this right now kind of thing same thing with cognitive load that's I don't think that's something that the whole field needs right now and then it has a conclusion and it gives us our sources so like I said I have already moved all these over into a Google Doc so that you can actually take the time to read them it's 24 pages for both of them together it copied over all the tables and everything the formatting is mostly pretty good it got a little bit weird in the tables and that the uh, some of them are a little bit squished let me go to the table that's a little bit squished so you can see what I was talking about I think it's the first table yeah so you can see the first column here is a little bit squished and the second to last column is a little bit squished but outside of that all the information is here from these two models so my personal opinion, if I had to summarize my experience with these two things, you know, from a testing of N of 1, I used one prompt. I was really impressed with Gemini's deep research on the Gemini website. I'd never used it before. I was really impressed with what it came up with. I'm sure it probably has hallucinations, the same as, as pretty much all LLMs have hallucinations sometimes, right? So for me, for deep research purposes right now, I'm probably gonna go to the Gemini website instead of using Chat LLM. At least until, you know, if Chat LLM keeps working on their implementation, um, I might find myself moving back to it. But for now, Gemini's was really good. I was really impressed with this. And I know, like I said, this is a test of N of one, but for me, there's a compelling enough difference between even just the way that it displays results that I will probably be using Gemini's deep research rather than the implementation of deep research through chat LLM in the near future. So that was my experience with it. I really enjoyed using it. Like I said, the link to this is in the description. Um, I would like to know your guys' thoughts on a few different things if you don't mind chatting about it in the comments. First and foremost, I would like to know who do you think won 
Is this Gemini one? Is this Gemini's deep research one, or did Chat LLM's implementation win? Like, if you read these two things, which one do you prefer, and why? Second, do you have a different deep research model that you prefer? Like, as an example, OpenAI's was the first one to really come to market in the public commercial space. I have not used that because I'm not going to pay for it. So, <laughs> if you use that. If you run this same question, I'm really curious if you get results that are similar to this or if they are totally different. Third, there are a lot of local deep research options out there. If you have experimented with that, I would love to know your thoughts on it. So that said, anything related to deep research, guys, in the comments and your experience with it, it seems like it's becoming a really wonderful tool for us in academia um, for learning things quickly, at least giving us that high level overview. Because as I've always said as an academic, we need to be, we need to know a lot about a little, but a little about a lot. And I think this is one of those things that can help you learn a little about a lot very, very quickly. We can use deep research to help us become conversant about things, but not necessarily know the ins and outs in depth, in depth details of it. And that's what I'm liking it for a lot. I'm really enjoying using deep research to help me become conversant about something quickly without me having the knowledge of like, in depth every single detail and I would never claim that I do right that's why I say I know a lot about a little I know a lot about pedagogical agents I know a lot about meta-analysis uh, I know a lot about systematic review I know a lot about multimedia learning but I know a little about a lot as an example I know about motivational theories I know about some epistemological approaches I know about mixed methods research I know about qualitative research like there's a lot of things I can talk about that I'm not an expert in I would never claim to be an expert in so that said I'm going to stop talking here. Please let me know your guys' thoughts in the comments down below on deep research and what you are using it for. And if you're finding something is working particularly well, um, please like and subscribe to help support the channel if you have not done so already. And if you have, thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm having so much fun putting these videos together for you guys. Uh, that said, thank you guys, and I will see you in the next video. Have an absolutely wonderful day.